With wrestlers garnering backstage heat across WWE and AEW, let's talk about that. Starting out this list, we have former AEW Women's Champion Thunder Rosa. She's had issues with plenty of people in AEW, starting out most prominently with Ivelisse in a match that they had, where it looked like Ivelisse was no-selling Thunder Rosa for whatever reason. Rosa would then get stiff with her in the ring, then during her reign as AEW Women's Champion, and Thunder Rosa would of course get injured and would be out of action for some time. She was supposed to have a feud and a match with Tony Storm. That Storm was ultimately going to win and take the belt off of Rosa. But due to that injury and her being out of action, she could not have that match, not fulfill her obligation, and would ultimately be forced to vacate the championship. Tony Storm would be promoted to Undisputed Champion, and her title reign as interim AEW Women's Champion was then recognized as an undisputed disputed title reign. While her issues with Ivelisse, as well as Tony Storm, probably got her some degree of backstage heat just between those two people, she also has issues with two other former AEW women's champions, those being Britt Baker and even Jamie Hayter. Noting the issue specifically between Britt Baker and Thunder Rosa, the sportster would write, though there have been rumors floating around since the end of Dynamite reports via Fightful Select outline that there is a significant amount of heat around Thunder Rosa coming from other members of the AEW women's division. Fightful report states that Rosa and Dr. Britt Baker can't stand each other and that an abrasive relationship between the two has been present for over a year now, but both sides have been open to working with one another and remaining professional. Having been on-screen rivals as of late, fans will remember various remarks made by Baker, particularly referencing the accusation of Rosa sandbagging her opponents and being uncooperative. Further relationships have been strained following Battle of the Belts 3, where Jamie Hayter came out of her championship match with Thunder Rosa with a broken nose. As a result, the reports share that Hater 2 harbors some heat towards Rosa for working stiff. Baker would take an indirect shot at Rosa during her appearance on the Swerve City podcast as she said this about not having missed any TV time despite her injuries, which of course Rosa had. Baker said, I never missed any episodes of TV with every like broken bone and injury. I'm just saying, what bone have I not broken at this point? My leg, my nose twice now, my wrist, the concussion and I was at work every week because that is where I wanted to be. I had my nose surgery on a Monday, Dynamite was on a Wednesday, and I was there cutting a promo because I wanted to be. AEW President Tony Khan is the most caring and wonderful guy, but I was like, this is an opportunity. I'm going to have a black guy. I'm sick in the head and thought, I'm going to look cool. Now, later on, all these reports were from last year. In February of 2023, it was said that Rosa apologized to those in the locker room, as Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful said, former AEW Women's Champion Thunder Rosa returned to the road for the first time since her injury forced her to eventually vacate the title. Fightful Select has learned that there was a locker room meeting for all of the women on the roster who were present at the tapings. Those that we heard from said that it was an effort to ease the tension between Rosa and the locker room after several relationships had frayed. Those that we spoke to with knowledge of the meeting said that Rosa did a lot of making amends for several issues that came up along the way during her previous run in the company. There were those on the roster that took issue with her approach to things and believed she made others on the women's roster seem like bullies. There were also complaints about sandbagging and working stiff. One member of the roster was quick to say that Rosa was met with some of that early in her AEW run as well, but that had long been rectified. There were some on the roster that took issue with her not being on the road with AEW while traveling for other work and questioned the legitimacy of her injury, which Rosa addressed publicly. Rosa wasn't wrestling, but instead did Spanish language commentary, which sources indicated she was happy to participate in. She noted that she'd be back on the road recently, but wouldn't be wrestling immediately. Those close to her claim she isn't cleared yet, but is getting closer to it. It was also noted that a member of AEW management told us they believed the meeting was productive and hoped it was a clean slate. AEW President Tony Khan would also address the issues in the women's locker room back in April, saying on Busted Open Radio, Thunder Rosa is not clear to return to the ring yet. When she is, certainly we'll welcome her back with open arms. It's been an interesting situation. Some of that stuff should stay behind closed doors, but 
Uh, that's where All Access does give fans a great chance to see what happens behind the scenes. We'll have more All Access taking a look backstage when Thunder Rosa comes back. I know that the locker room and Thunder Rosa at times have had some stuff. I also think that should be largely between everyone that was in the room. There is a point on All Access where I have to make a decision. This is as much access as anyone backstage would reasonably get. You'll see me making tough choices about what we do and don't show. Thunder Rosa is a great wrestler and has been a great champion. I look forward to having her back. She's done a lot of things. We would ask on the path to return and try to make amends with some people, but there are some things you can't amend. There are some people who are never going to get along or be friends. Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker are never going to be friends or get along. It's probably going to be an intense rivalry for as long as they are both wrestling. They are not two people who are ever going to be buddies. Thunder Rosa, we look forward to having her back in the ring. When the announcement was made to create a new show on Saturday, AEW Collision, it was rumored that this would be done to separate those in the AEW locker room that had issues with one another. And we can see CM Punk is separated from the Elite, Punk is on Collision, the Elite is on Dynamite, Andrade is on Collision, Sammy Guevara is on Dynamite, they of course had a backstage altercation that got physical, and then Thunder Rosa was announced for the Collision show as well, and Britt Baker, Jamie Hayter, and all the other women that have an issue with her seemingly are staying on Dynamite. It's fair to say that Thunder Rosa has garnered a great deal of backstage heat during her time in AEW. We have Andrade El Idolo. He made his professional wrestling debut in October of 2003, starting out to make his name in the Mexican promotion CMLL, and then went on to perform for New Japan Professional Wrestling. After that, he would make his way to WWE, establishing himself as a main event star on the NXT brand, becoming their world champion. He would make his way to the main roster, even capturing the United States title. After requesting his release from WWE in March of 2021 and initially being denied it, he would eventually be granted it. He would make his return to Mexico, competing in Lucha Libre AAA Worldwide, before making his debut in All Elite Wrestling. While he has been a part of various feuds during his time in AEW, he is primarily known for his backstage rivalries, more specifically one with Sammy Guevara. The tensions between Guevara and Andrade began with an interview Andrade did and responses from Guevara on Twitter that caused a social media back and forth between the two and would lead to a physical altercation backstage. F4W Online wrote on October 4th of 2022, in what is either an elaborate work toward a future storyline or another real-life backstage issue that has come to light, AEW Sammy Guevara and Andrade El Idolo took to Twitter Tuesday to engage in a social media war of words. The issues appear to have started with a Spanish language interview Andrade did Monday, where he mentioned that the only wrestler he has ever had a problem with is Guevara. Andrade claimed that Guevara complained he hit him both too hard and too frequently in an unspecified match. Andrade said he told Guevara that it was just wrestling and if he hit Guevara too hard, he should do the same to him. He said he talked to Guevara without any physical altercation and asked if there was a problem to which Guevara said there wasn't. The two have shared a ring three times in AEW this year, a February singles match, a March three-way with Darby Allin, and a six-man tornado match at March's Revolution. It's unknown which specific match Guevara is alleged to have complained about. On Monday night, Guevara tweeted the following, which is assumed to be towards Andrade. You were a jobber. A favor higher. Be grateful, bitch. On Tuesday morning, Andrade tweeted this toward Guevara in response. I said it to your face if you had a problem with me and you said nothing. I won't beat your ass because I'm a professional. Don't be scared. When I say something, I name names and I'm not scared to get fired. Hashtag Sammy. Guevara then retorted denying an altercation took place and taking shots at Andrade for supposedly wanting to return to WWE. You didn't say shh to me, you liar, but here's some truth, you ungrateful prick. You would be jobless if it wasn't for your dad-in-law. Are you really mad at me or mad at yourself for failing to get over for a second time? Just go back to WWE like we all know you want to do and F off. Andrade then said he will see Guevara Wednesday and teased another confrontation. Okay, I'm a liar. See you on Wednesday. I'll tell you to your face again. And nothing you say that you do not have any problem. For the adding to this confusion as to the legitimacy of all this is Andrade's on-screen companion, Jose the Assistant, confirming Andrade's account of things. 
I was there and can confirm this incident happened. Andrade El Idolo gave an honest interview about his thoughts on AEW, his upcoming AEW Rampage match with his AEW career on the line, and more. Good thing no one in AEW can translate Spanish to English uncensored. However, Andrade and Guevara are not currently in any storyline together, nor has there been the tease of one recently. Going back to the story in question, Screen Rant got the quote when Andrade was speaking to Mas Lucha. Andrade said, I did have one issue with a wrestler. I'm going to say his name. It was Sammy Guevara. I had an issue with him because he once came to the locker room and complained that we hit him too hard. It's wrestling. Solve it in the ring. If I hit hard, hit me hard too. I learned that he came in and that he accused me like a little girl. After I learned about it, I spoke to him and asked if he had an issue with me, but he said he did not, and that's all there was to it. So following that interview that Andrade did, accusing Sammy Guevara of complaining about Andrade hitting him too hard in one of their matches, they had the back and forth on social media, and then at the end of that exchange, Andrade said he would see him in person. And this would of course escalate, as SI.com reported on October 5th, 2022, just one month after the melee at All Out, AEW was dealing with another backstage altercation. Andrade El Idolo and Sammy Guevara were reportedly involved in a legitimate physical backstage altercation before Wednesday's episode of AEW Dynamite went on the air, per a report from TMZ Sports that was confirmed by the Wrestling Observer. There are conflicting reports as to who started the incident. The incident led to El Idolo being sent home from the show, while Guevara was not sent home after the incident and still teamed with Chris Jericho against Brian Danielson and Daniel Garcia on Dynamite. El Idolo was scheduled for a match against Preston Ten Vance on AEW Rampage this Friday, AEW CEO Tony Khan announced prior to Dynamite that El Idolo vs. Vance is off Friday's Rampage. Commenting further on this situation in the backstage heat specifically on Andrade, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter noted that several have noted that the talent needs to keep their issues off Twitter whether they feel wronged or not, and that was something Guevara was criticized for. Privately, some of the key talents is even more upset with Andrade than would be otherwise because of the timing of this happening, Andrade being fully aware of it, and how this made the company look to the public. On Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer added in regards to the physical altercation between Guevara and Andrade, he said, Andrade is trying to get fired. We all know that. So far, when guys want to leave, some will go to great extremes to do that. It's happened with WWE. I've talked to people in WWE who have tried to get fired with some of the craziest things in the world. Now, getting in a fight was never one of them, but there's things much crazier than that. Meltzer continued detailing some grave news about AEW's backstage issues. So now the situation is on the other front where there's a few people, and it's not that many. It's like three that want to leave AEW, and there's different stories. Andrade is one of them, and he's basically said it publicly in that interview. It would be added by screen rant that reports indicate that Andrade El Idolo was told that fighting with Sammy would not result in his termination. That's the route he decided to take anyway, and he was sent home from Dynamite. Andrade allegedly threw punches at Guevara, and the fight quickly ended. Multiple eyewitness accounts have confirmed that Guevara didn't retaliate in any way, which is likely why he was allowed to be a part of the third anniversary show. Now, Andrade El Idolo is a part of AEW Collision, and Sammy Guevara is more than likely going to be staying on AEW Dynamite, keeping these two separate from one another, despite them being in the same promotion. It's safe to say that Andrade, at the very least, probably still has backstage heat to some degree with Sammy Guevara, and possibly even others that are supporters of Sammy. Next up, we have AEW star Sammy Guevara. He would make his professional wrestling debut in December of 2010, being trained at Booker T's Wrestling School and working across independent promotions before making his way to Lucha Libre AAA Worldwide and then making his debut for AEW. Now, of course, as mentioned previously, Guevara probably still has heat with Andrade El Idolo. We don't need to get into that. But prior to Andrade, he had issues with another AEW star in Eddie King. Comicbook.com would explain the situation in September of 2022. Not even a month prior to his issues with Andrade, they wrote, The All Elite Wrestling backstage drama began weeks before CM Punk's now infamous AEW All Out press conference. While there have been plenty of tensions in the company's locker room, the first time Bad Blunt turned physical was between Eddie Kingston and Sammy Guevara. The two men were kicking off a feud that would culminate in a singles bout at the pay-per-view, reportedly with Kingston going over. In an unaired promo segment from AEW Rampage, Guevara poked fun 
at Kingston's weight, which the Mad King took exception with. This led to a reported physical encounter between the two backstage, resulting in a quiet suspension for Kingston. This is the first time that Kingston's physique has resulted in escalated tensions in AEW, but it is far from the only instance that his weight has been brought up in a promo. It doesn't bother me until people who didn't draw money say it, Kingston said on Busted Open Radio. If you say it, maybe I'll go. Maybe I need to rethink things. If Booker T said it, all right, maybe I gotta hit the gym harder. But if it's someone who hasn't done anything or someone who's a holder on, then that bothers me. Kingston and Guevara have since buried the hatchet as they reportedly talked things out and shook hands at the end of August. While Kingston didn't excuse Guevara's comments, he did admit he was most frustrated with the situation due to already having a bad mood on that day. I woke up that day in a bad mood, Kingston continued. I woke up, I rubbed the crust out of my eyes, I looked at my phone, and I went, oh no, not you. It had nothing to do with him, it could have been anybody at that day, but since it was him, I was like, no, not you. Mentioning the backstage issues in AEW, Wrestling Inc. would write in October 24th, Eddie Kingston is learning to use his words. I had an HR meeting a couple days ago telling me I can't beat people up in the ring when I want to, Kingston recently said on Eat Sleep Podcast Repeat. We're all trying to be good, we're all trying to be professional. Their words, not mine. Kingston was pressed about the recent backstage turmoil in AEW, of which he has been a part. Kingston was recently suspended for getting in a physical altercation backstage with Sammy Guevara, who has since also been involved in a separate backstage incident with Andrade El Idolo as well. It's real simple, Kingston explained. You've got a lot of people back there with egos. Some people believe other people don't deserve to be in AEW. Other people do believe they deserve to be in AEW. So when you've got a bunch of guys, men and women, who don't know how to use their words, things are going to happen in the back. While Kingston would continue to perform on AEW Dynamite, these days he is in Ring of Honor. It is unlikely he is being kept separate from Guevara, seeing as though they reportedly squashed that beef, but it's safe to say there may still be issues between the two. Nevertheless, we definitely know Sammy Guevara has a history of getting heat on himself in the examples of Kingston and even Andrade, not to mention the profanity he used when recalling a story from his time at the WWE Performance Center prior to AEW where he noticed Sasha Banks and made very unsavory comments regarding her. This would of course lead to him being suspended by the company and having his pay be donated to an organization that helps people recovering from domestic abuse taking part in strongman competitions prior to his professional wrestling career, Braun Strowman would make an impression in the ring after signing with WWE in early 2013. He would train out of the Performance Center and then made his professional wrestling debut at an NXT live event in December of 2014. Soon enough, he would find himself on the main roster making his Raw debut in August of 2015. He would become a part of the Wyatt family alongside Bray Wyatt, Luke Harper, and Eric Rowan. He would eventually be split from the Wyatt family in 2016 and go on to have a pretty decent singles career. During that run, he would go on to win most notably the Universal Championship, the Intercontinental title, and is a two-time Raw Tag Team Champion. He won Money in the Bank, won the Greatest Royal Rumble, and the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. While learning the ropes in professional wrestling has definitely garnered respect from his peers in the industry, there was an incident that created detractors for Braun Strowman. Now, he would be released from WWE on June 2nd of 2021 during the budget cut phase following the pandemic. He'd make his return to the company in September of 2022. It was during the second run in WWE that Braun Strowman would have a feud with Omos, Giant vs. Giant. This would culminate in a bout at Crown Jewel in which Braun Strowman was victorious. While there is nothing of note regarding simply the details of the match at hand, it is what Braun Strowman said after that grabbed headlines. Strowman would take to Twitter and write, Holy hell, Omos, can you believe we got 47 five stars and reminded the people that no one cares about all these floppy floppers? Giants and Monster are greater than flippy flipper bagger groceries at Kroger. Now, this was an obvious shot at the more aerial, high-flying style of today. Braun Strowman is, of course, a very big man, and he wrestles as a giant. 
as is Omos. Now, this may have simply been a light-hearted remark to get some attention and poke some fun at some of the smaller guys in professional wrestling, but it made a lot of people angry. Will Ospreay, New Japan star, would write back to him, Why are you so mad about making money? It's dead funny that you actually done such a great job, and yet you're mad at other people that do the same job as you. Relax, my guy. Just say you really enjoyed showing super heavyweight wrestling. Mustafa Ali wrote, Can you teach me how to get fired? Ricochet wrote, Just don't ask him to stand on a scale or he'll threaten to sue you. Ha ha ha. And Chris Jericho replied, I used to bag groceries. Of course, many online would make their feelings towards Strowman known. There were also plenty backstage that did not go on Twitter to voice their opinions that viewed what Braun Strowman said in a negative light. For more details on that backstage heat, TJRWrestling.net writes, According to Fightful Select, Braun Strowman has been criticized by multiple co-workers throughout WWE after his crown jewel comments on Twitter in which he targeted flippy wrestlers and grocery baggers. The tweets have since been deleted. At the time, multiple wrestlers, including WWE's Mustafa Ali and Ricochet, openly threw criticism towards Strowman's way, but it's now spread even further backstage. Other wrestlers outside of the company who got after Strowman included Chris Jericho, Keith Lee, Will Ospreay, among others. The Fightful Select report also also notes that Braun Strowman has been on his best behavior backstage since making his comeback to WWE, and there haven't been any problems with him in person. However, social media Braun Strowman is seeming to cause problems with fellow wrestlers. According to the report, World Wrestling Entertainment is aware of the situation, with one official saying that Strowman was immature with his approach. One source also told Fightful that Strowman's words have nothing to do with any kind of angle, nor will they be turning it into one. However, However, the source did go on to say that Strowman could ultimately be ribbed for his comments or referenced on television for his views. Also, according to Fightful Select's report, one wrestler would make the claim of they'll never do a flip in their life, as well as saying that Braun Strowman should have never tweeted what he did, adding, we need them and they need us. Wrestling is everything. There is very little truly right and wrong. He didn't come up in the business doing the things that a lot of those people did, so he probably doesn't understand. Now, WWE commentator Corey Graves would end up defending Braun Strowman, saying this on his After the Bell podcast. To everyone on the internet who is all up Braun's ass and Braun being proud of himself and declaring that, in his opinion, that was the greatest big man match of all time, look, it doesn't have to be your opinion. Everyone is entitled to their opinion. It's a subjective business. Braun delivered and Braun was feeling himself. He got a whole bunch of people up in arms about him saying, I'm the best. That's what this game is now. This this game is about self-promotion. This game leans a lot more these days towards Logan Paul than the days of old where you had Mean Gene Okerlund or Kevin Patrick standing backstage trying to convey a feeling. This business isn't about wins and losses. It's about emotion. It's not about moves. It's about feelings. Yes, there is a place. I'm a fan of technical wrestling. I love a good high flyer. I love Ricochet and all these guys. I'm not disparaging them at all, but this is a buffet, particularly in WWE. We have something for everybody. If you don't like the flippy guys, here comes the Giants. If you don't like the Giants, watch this. We have the best athletes in the world. We have the best technical wrestlers in the world. Relax, everybody. This is a guy who wanted to get people talking, and he did. Guess what? Braun is not losing any sleep. As he himself admits, it's all about his bank account these days. I'm sure the monster is sleeping pretty well these nights. Months later on programming, Braun Strowman would begin to have interactions with Ricochet, and the two would even become a tag team. Talking about this alliance between him and the monster among men, Ricochet said this about it, as well as this about the remarks he had made following Crown Jewel. Ricochet told digital spies Stephanie Chase, I think the internet cares more about it than the wrestlers do. For the most part, everybody backstage, they just want to make something together. They want to make a work of art for you guys. I don't think anyone really cares about the styles of anyone else, so if you're really hearing it, it's usually from more of the internet speakers than it actually is the locker room. While there was certainly a bit of backstage heat on Braun Strowman from his peers that spoke up online on Twitter, that seems to have dissipated in recent times. Moving on, we have the woman formerly known in WWE as Sasha Banks, these days going by the name Mercedes Monet. She began training in 2008 
and would make her professional wrestling debut in August of 2010. By June of 2012, she'd participate in a WWE tryout camp, and in a couple months after that, she would be signed to a contract and head to NXT. She would go on to win her first championship in WWE in the form of the NXT Women's Title in February of 2015. Later that year, in July, she would make her move to the main roster. The following year, she would become the Raw Women's Champion, a title she held five times in total. She is also a former SmackDown Women's Champion and was one half of the inaugural WWE Women's Tag Team Champions and is a three-time winner of that belt. This makes her not only a Women's Triple Crown Champion, but makes her a WWE Women's Grand Slam Champion. During the end of her stint with WWE, she would win the women's tag team title for a third time with Naomi. They would win the tag belts during night two of WrestleMania 38. Then Banks and Naomi's title defense on the May 13th episode of SmackDown would be their final televised WWE appearance. They worked a live event on May 15th of 2022 and were supposed to be at the following night's Monday Night Raw on May 16th. Banks and Naomi were booked to be a part of that show's main event, but would end up walking out prior to the show taking place. WrestlingInc.com would write this regarding the situation. After walking out during Raw this week, Sasha Banks has backstage heat, according to Dave Meltzer on the latest edition of Wrestling Observer Radio. These feelings were passed on from people not in WWE management, but they also weren't aware of the full situation going on. Naomi's name was not mentioned, so it is unknown whether or not there are the same feelings towards her right now. Of course, the women's tag team champions opted to leave the arena last night during Raw, which changed the plans for the main event of the show. Originally, it was said to be a six-pack match featuring both Sasha Banks and Naomi, where the winner earned a title shot against Bianca Belair. That ended up becoming a singles match between Becky Lynch and Asuka, and the decision for Sasha Banks and Naomi to leave was brought up. WWE released the following statement last night regarding the situation. When Sasha Banks and Naomi arrived at the arena this afternoon, they were informed of their participation in the main event of tonight's Monday Night Raw. During the broadcast, they walked into WWE Head of Talent Relations, John Laurinaitis' office, with their suitcases in hand, placed their Tag Team Championship belts on his desk, and walked out. They claimed they weren't respected enough as Tag Team Champions. And even though they had eight hours to rehearse and construct their match, they claimed they were uncomfortable in the ring with two of their opponents, even though they'd had matches with those individuals in the past with no consequence. Monday Night Raw is a scripted live TV show whose characters are expected to perform the requirements of their contract. We regret we were unable to deliver, as advertised, tonight's main event. Since then, Sasha Banks has unfollowed all WWE-related social media accounts, including Vince McMahon. Meanwhile, a friend of Naomi's has tweeted at length about the issue, citing creative as the problem here. Naomi was set to win the match last night and face Bianca Belair at Hell in a Cell. She was going to pin Nikki A.S.H. to achieve that goal, not Sasha, as had been speculated. It is believed that they wanted to focus on improving the tag team division instead. Neither woman reportedly had any safety concerns about their opponents, despite what WWE we claimed. Now, Sasha Banks is going by Mercedes Monet and has most recently competed for New Japan Pro Wrestling. And these were wrestlers that recently had backstage heat. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all later.